Now, MTN is one of the world's largest mobile phone companies with businesses in Nigeria, South Africa, Ghana, and Iran. And by largest, we're talking here about customers, you know, 240, 250 million customers. That's a hell of a lot of people to have a business relationship with. Market cap, 208.6 billion rand, no price earnings ratio, dividend yield of 6.3%. Let's take a step back on M10. <laughs> Where are we today? Because we've got this whole management reshuffle taking place. I'm sure they're all settling down into their proverbial hot seats right now and trying to strategize on the way forward for MTN. Yeah, so, you know, Putuma and Leko stepped in uh, at the time that uh, MTN was going through the issues in, in Nigeria. You know, now uh, they've hired uh, Rob Shooter. Uh, who's actually from uh, from Vodafone? Uh, he was from Vodafone, uh, and yeah. has a and, and a net bank before, so he has a, a banking background. And of course, they hired uh, Stefan von Koller from Absa, who's also a banking background. So MTN has grown its business to 240 million subscribers over the years through a lot of uh, deals, uh, acquisitions that they've done, and, and fresh startups they've done throughout the continent. And that was kind of like the DNA of MTN. It's one of the things we loved about them. Uh, they were a phenomenal growth uh, company in Africa. It seemed to have flipped now, you know, because the share price has come down so much. They've had so many uh, scandals. I mean, the latest one being the, the, the Turkcell fine of four and a half billion that they're looking to, 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 to get out of MTN. You know, it's become a bit more of a value play now. Uh, well, let's have a look at the, the share price graph because loved ugly. is the <laughs> operative word there uh, that you used, Nason. Mm. Paul, you were once hugely in love with this stock, if I uh, may. I would say I'm still in a, a long-term relationship with this company. Although love and uh, infatuation is what characterized the early years, now it's been more of a kind of resigned, Steady uh, as it disappointed, goes. Uh, kind of hanging in there grimly. And you're not going to give up on it, though? Probably not. Look, uh, a lot of the problems the company have had are really related to the fact that their core market, Nigeria, suffered from a major economic setback because of oil prices coming back. I mean, you've traveled to Nigeria much more than I have, but the economy there is under real pressure, and that has put a dampener on airtime sales and the value that's perceived out of that market. And it's created the stresses of a regulatory nature. Iran is a plus, but of course Iran is also an oil-based economy. So there's that issue. And there was also the fine recently in Rwanda. In Rwanda. And what uh, Nesson is referring to is not a fine as much as it is a legal challenge from Turkcell Turk about Cell. the Iranian license. It's an old, old issue which has already been knocking around for ages. This is either going to be the best decision somebody makes today for a 10 year period or you're going to lose your money yeah listen you know i'm i'm pretty positive about the sort of long-term prospects of this i think the new management are going to have to deal with these uh these these fines and these uh, legal cases and stuff but fundamentally mtn still has a very big market share on the whole continent i mean 240 million subscribers is a is a hell of a lot of people mm -hmm. to be selling you know advanced technological product to and i think the opportunities for mtn like vodacom has gone into things like financial services and things the opportunities for mtn exist but on a much bigger scale uh they have to get their house in order and i think we've got to give them the opportunity to do that but I think if, you, if you're patient enough... Uh, you what know, is patient, though? I mean, we talk about long-term capital. What are we talking about in terms of, of patience here, in uh, your opinion? Okay, so the first thing is uh, things have to stabilize in, in Nigeria. Now, it's, it's, I mean, the oil price is down again today. So, you know, you're going to have to find some sort of base for the oil price or, or some sort of base for the Nigerian economy uh, and for things to return to normal. So, you know, FX transfers and things to be done there. Um, you're going to have to uh, uh, see what happens with the whole Turkcell thing. It doesn't look like Turkcell is going to be letting go anytime soon. Uh, we're going to have to wait for new management to set in and to define exactly what their business plan is uh, going to be for, for, for taking the business forward. Uh, but the industry that MTN operates in is you know, largely data-related services, uh, cell phone-related services on the entire continent. And you know, if, if, if over a period of five or ten years, growth returns to the continent, then you're going to want to be in MTN. It may be too late then, and maybe it's the right decision so to invest in So this is a five to now. ten year bet, Paul? Five to, to ten years? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think it can turn sooner, maybe two. I think they could be looking at deals, because remember Rob Shooter, Stephen Collar, both deal-oriented sort of guys, and operationally I'm sure it's going to be tidier. But I don't know. I mean, Nigeria... The acting president, Osun Bajo, I think is actually uh, a real gift to that country because he's like an economics professor 
and he's a clean administration type of guy. So it could be that that economy does well. In Iran, there was the re-election of Hassan Rouhani, who is the more moderate uh, president, which is encouraging. So you can't see further sort of liberalization there. I know these are very macro arguments. There are macro arguments, and, and I'm going to reserve mm. comment on, on the political front, and, and mm. specifically on the Nigerian economy. We've got a whole team in Nigeria mm. focused on daily commentary out of that territory, and the news flow, you know, let's just be honest, hasn't been good. It hasn't been good, but I think MTN's numbers will start looking better. The year-on-year -year comparisons will look a bit better. But it really needs something fresh and new to ignite upward movement in the share price. For now, we seem to be in sort of drift mode. Let's just look back at that share price, and there we've got it on the screen. Mm. We are sitting at, where are we, Paul? It's around 113 mm. rands a share, and it's been really in that kind of zone between 110 and 120 for at least, you know, the two years we've been sitting here talking about them. Hot or not? I think a lot of the clouds may actually dissipate a lot sooner. So I'm going to go hot on it right now. Uh, but, you know, just bear in the back of your mind that you know, it, the share price may be actually weakened, but hot for now. Hot with a caution sign. Hot. Yeah, I'll go hot in it. We own it in the hot stocks portfolio and we're going to hang in there because that's what we do.